Apparently, very soon Fedor Emelianenko will finally end his legendary career and hung up his gloves. At various times, he beat many top fighters and champions and became the champion of Pride, the strongest league in the world. But before declaring himself to the whole world, Fedor fought in the slightly less popular fighting organization Rings in Japan, and in today's issue we'll recall his very first steps from his debut to the transition to Pride. Fedor's first rival in rings was the Bulgarian Martin Lazarev, who was the champion of his country and the winner of the European Freestyle Wrestling Championship. No. <laughs> Fedor started the fight with a good punch on a leap and Martin of course went to wrestle, but after the fighters were on the ground, the referee wasn't satisfied with their low activity and he raised the fighters to a stance. And by the way, one of the points of the rules was that hitting the head on the ground is prohibited. Martin put Fedor on the floor, but this time Emelianenko managed to carry out the guillotine, and at the third minute the fight was over. Although the operators missed this moment and filmed not the fight itself, but the reaction of Fedor's mentor, Volkan. Three months later, Fedor had a fight with another freestyle wrestler. This time he was opposed by a fighter from Georgia, Levon Lagbilava, who wasn't only a wrestler, but also the karate champion of Georgia. And this fight was the complete domination of Fedor, who looked better both in a stance and on the ground, where he in every possible way tried to finish the opponent with a submission. Levan couldn't resist to Fedor at all and twice flew to the knockdown. And from this frame, everything becomes clear. Fedor, without really breaking a sweat, takes his back and makes the Georgian fighter tap. After the massacre of the freestylers, Fedor switched to the Japanese. He met another wrestler, Hiroi Takada, who in 1998 won the All Japan Youth Olympics. And this bout with Emelianenko became his debut in rings. Catchy but not the most pleasant debut when you are defeated in 12 seconds, so it's not surprising that the Japanese's career didn't work out. He spent three more fights, of which he won one, and hung up his gloves. As for Fedor, he got a place in the Grand Prix King of Kings, where the best fighters of the organization identified the champion. On December 22, 2000, the first two rounds of the tournament took place, and to pass to the next stage, the fighter had to go through two opponents in the evening. The first whom Fedor fought was the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu master Ricardo Arona, and Fedor won this fight by unanimous decision. Although it turned out to be extremely close and many believe that due to more active actions, it was Arona who should have taken the fight. But after looking at it several times, I want to say my opinion. I think that the Brazilian didn't win for sure, since Fedor had submission attempts and Ricardo himself, apart from control, didn't show anything special in this fight. Personally, I would give this fight a draw, but there could be no draw since this is a Grand Prix, so the result, as for me, is quite correct. What do you think about this? Write in the comments. At the second stage, Fedor got the Japanese fighter to Yoshi Kasaka, who knocked out Mikhail Ilufin in the first round. This fight ended after 17 seconds. To Yoshi, striking a blow, hooked Fedor with his elbow and opened the cut. Doctors examined the wound and decided that the fight should be stopped. Kasaka, for an illegal, however not intentional elbow, should have been disqualified. But since Fedor couldn't continue his performance due to a cut, it was the Japanese who passed to the next stage and Fedor received his first defeat. But after five years in Pride, the fighters met again and this time the fight was also over thanks to the doctors. But Fedor, unlike Toyoshi, deliberately crumbled the opponent's face and won the rematch. Emelianenko's next stop was a duel against 21-year-old Bulgarian Mikhail Apostolov, who was the champion of his country in Sambo. As soon as the fight begins, Mikhail goes for the legs, but Fedor defends himself well, and then after a short massage, he takes his back and finishes his opponent at the first minute. This was another rather easy victory for Fedor Emelianenko. In 2001, Fedor took part in another Rings Open Weight Grand Prix. 
At the first stage he got basic wrestler Kerry Shaw and was nicknamed Mid Truck due to his appearance and the force of his punch. And in this fight he was 57 pounds heavier than Emelianenko. <laughs> The truck pushed forwards in the very first seconds, but Fedor whipped him on the cockpit and transferred him to the ground, where he tried to finish with an armbar. Fedor grabs the boogie's leg and transfers him to the ground going to Achilles, and Kerry begins to resemble an ordinary wrestling dummy, on which Emelianenko is practicing skills. At the second minute, Fedor held the armbar and let the meat trunk down the slope, thereby went to the next stage of the tournament. At the second stage, the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu master Renato Sobral was waiting for him. Fedor dominated the stance and perfectly kept Sobral on the canvas, showered him with punches and even despite the ban on hitting in the head, Fedor confidently shot the Brazilian, who could only be credited with a couple of attempts to carry out a leg lock. So Fedor's natural victory by points and passage to the finale of the tournament, where Bobby Huffman was to become his rival. He beat many famous fighters during his career, but when I hear this name, I remember O-Rim's knockout. <laughs> Hoffman didn't go to the final fight, referring to the injury he received and thus Fedor was automatically awarded the first rings championship belt in the open weight. After the first triumph, Fedor got the taste and took part in another rings grand prix. At the first stage, he got the Japanese fighter Rushi Yanagisawa, who walked on a rather impressive record of 24 wins, 22 losses and 9 draws. In this battle, Fedor again showed his superiority and completely controlled the course of the fight, all the three rounds allotted. As a result, the victory by unanimous decision of the judges and the passage to the second stage of the tournament. In the semi-finals, Fedor's rival was Lee Hasdell, a fighter from England who was the first to organise professional MMA fights in the UK. For this reason, he was called the godfather of British MMA. It took Fedor only 4 minutes to carry out the guillotine and force Hasdell to tap, thereby making it to the final of the tournament. In the final, Fedor had a fight with a jitsu from Australia, Chris Hazeman, and already at the third minute he managed to finish off his opponent and become the champion of rings for the second time. Как они болели и поддерживали меня. Я на этом не буду заканчивать свою спортивную карьеру. Надеюсь, буду радовать их и дальше. This fight was the last for him before the transfer to Pride, where Fedor went to fight the elite, but years later he himself became this elite. He won the Pride Grand Prix, became the champion, and did no defeats for 10 years. Unfortunately, Fedor didn't fight in UFC, but during his long career, he fought many times with former and future champions of UFC. And about this, I have a separate video, which will also be in the description. And that's all I have for today, my friends. If you like my video, like it, subscribe to the channel, and press the bell so as not to miss new episodes.